Hello and welcome to the show. I'm here on Beam NG Drive with three more vehicles taking on the American Descent. Starting with a Grand Marshal. This, no ordinary Grand Marshal. It is a rally spec car. It's also got a black and orange paint, which is likely to lead to the car getting into some trouble. Let's be honest. Uh, rally spec suspension, lighter uh, than a normal version of the Grand Marshal. Decent amount of power from the engine as well. It is rear wheel drive. Which, of course, is not the preferred drive line, shall we say, when it comes... Oh, okay, we've got some understeer through there. We don't quite carry as much speed through that corner as I thought we were going to. That's not a... I'm glad I don't have a co-driver. I'm, I'm very glad I don't have a co-driver. Well, the front end does not have as much grip as I was anticipating it having, shall we say. Uh, that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, oh, we're going to do exactly the same thing again. It really does not like that particular corner. Oh, dear. Ow. That's a, that's a big crack. Actually, we've, we've hit that tree so hard, it's actually dislodged the entirety of the rear axle. Look at that thing moving around in there. That's a difficult corner. That, apparently... For the Grand Marshal, that's a difficult corner. Oh, there's a lot of understeer up over Panorama. I think we're going to be in trouble here. I think we're going to be in a world of trouble here. I can't. No. Oh. Ooh, we've, 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 we've lost a lot of wheels. I say we've lost a lot of wheels. We've lost half of our wheels. The fuel tank's gone. That was, I was understeering on the way up through Panorama, and I thought I was going to go off initially. I managed to somehow survive Panorama, and then it all just... It, I just couldn't get it back into a, a decent position. The Kilolot jumps are a little bit clunky, a little bit bouncy. Uh, nothing too terrible through all of that. I mean, that's a nasty crest. It always is. Oh, no, 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 no. Too much power. Too much power was deployed. It's fine. We're all good. Um, it doesn't really drive in a straight line anymore. Uh, <laughs> really, really doesn't drive in a straight line anymore. Uh, unfortunately, oh, it wants to turn left and we're into right hand at the heart. <laughs> okay. Yeah, bumps. I was kind of panicking a little bit when we were running out towards the outside outside of the circuit. I didn't want to go up the banking and just sort of put my foot down a little bit. And it was only a little bit too much, but it was enough. Oh, come on, get out of the hairpin, try and find some form of, of grip. Now, we've got to be a bit sideways through Sebring there to uh, mitigate the worst of the bumps, and it has worked through Sebring, but it's not worked on the exits. Oh, we actually got Sebring lovely. It was just a little wide on the on the exit, and that was enough. Once you get the wheel caught in the ditch, it's really difficult to get out of the ditch again. Uh, I mean, the car's still actually fine with all of that, but, uh, oh, that's not going to be fine. <laughs> The car still works, even bumping into the tree. Uh, yeah, with a long car like this, especially with the overhang at the back, if you run a little bit wide and you get that caught on the uh, scenery, you're going to be in trouble. So, scenery is mean, understeer is quite present, and oversteer is easy to exacerbate and go round in a circle. Got to be a little careful with this uh, with this vehicle. There is plenty of power, there is plenty of speed in this, if you can manage to access it, which isn't so easy, especially with a lot of these hairpins. They're not being a huge amount of grip in this car. Uh, the You can't throw it into the corners like the all-wheel drive cars. You're never going to with a rally, with a rear-wheel drive car, even a rally spec vehicle such as this, and that means you've just got to be, you've got to be patient. And I don't really trust the car with the understeer that we have going on. The front end doesn't, well, I mean, I, I say I don't trust it. I can deal with it. It just means we're going to be slower. It just means we've got to be very slow coming into these corners, and I can't, I'm using the handbrake more than I would normally with a rear-wheel drive car. Uh, and even then, you know, we're having issues with the back of the car. Through Sebring, that's how we do it. Lovely job through it there we don't get affected too much by the bumps we get the car nicely under control is another hairpin where we're gonna wiggle and well it feels like we're wasting a lot of time now don't cut i'm actually really struggling getting that car turned through there that's not so helpful through all of that we might have done some damage to one of the rear wheels it doesn't look like it's affecting it too much as we are across the line and through the caravan actually a very good hit on the caravan very good hit on the caravan, Grand Marshal. Uh, 
I managed to get the air filter slightly through the bonnet. But uh, yeah, I mean, a rear-wheel drive rally car is always going to have that that lack of lack of traction. Uh, it deals with the bumps okay. I think a fair bit of time is going to be wasted out of the hairpins really struggling to, to get any power down. It just doesn't feel like it can really get going quick enough out of the hairpins. Again, though, how it will compare amongst the rear-wheel drive cars, that's going to be the interesting bit. So, up next, we have got what might look like a fairly normal covert. However... It is not. This is electric powered. It is the most powerful, I guess, motor, battery, combination, etc. that I can get in the car. So it should be about as fast as we can get an electric covert to go down this rally stage. So here is hoping that uh, we can do some... something decent with the... Oh God, with the car. Alright, there's a fair bit of acceleration. Also, a fair bit of understeer going on. Just, right, I need to bear that in mind. Again, not quite got the greatest turning. While the plus points of electric power, of course, all of that instant torque, all of that instant power uh, is good. Downsides are likely to have lots of battery stuff, likely to be heavy. Christ, that's up to 70 miles an hour before Hammond's hairpin. Panic! 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 It's gone wrong! No! <laughs> It's all got a little bit. It's all got a little bit wrong there. Uh, we are all-wheel drive as well, which is helpful. Uh, however, that's very fast. <laughs> that's very fast there, and doesn't have the brakes to go with it. And I can throw this one around. We can really chuck the electric car into these into these corners. Uh, although I've got panorama wrong. Nope, that's not worked, has it? Amazingly. Oh, if that doesn't break a rear wheel. Oh, no, it's dead. It's gone. <laughs> I don't know what exact part has gone, because it didn't really tell me, but something's got nothing worked at all on the car. It's all broken. Right, I've really got to be prepared for the understeer. In many ways, much like the Grand Marshal, perhaps, what's exacerbating the problem is the car is suddenly going quicker there than I'm expecting, although that was... We actually had a... Oh, we've made a convertible. Uh, unintentionally made a convertible. We've not had a good day with getting trees through the passenger side of my car. Oh, that's a nasty one. That actually... just the back, the back started bouncing through turn one. I don't even know why it was enough to upset the car massively. Now, Panorama, we had things very, very wonky. Uh, first time of asking. Second time of asking. Have gone wonky in a different... We made it further. We're on our roof, but we did not We did make it further. Oh, dear. <laughs> and a roll. Oh, that's the back of the car there. Although we are going to survive this time around. This time around, the electric cover has made it. Although we don't have any steering really anymore. No, nope, steering's gone. <laughs> it does still work technically, though. Well, kind of. The kilowatt jumps are a little bit scary with this car. I wonder if it is potentially weight being in strange. It's going to do the same thing again. Yeah. I wonder if weight being in strange places is what's causing the uh, issue here with the bouncing. I don't know, but I feel like that might be a possibility. I have to just kind of be patient, and this is me trying to be a little bit patient. We've still got bounced around. However, we have got uh, through. We're going right into a left hand and never what you want. And I've pulled that one all up on the uh, exit as well. Ah, we made it across the kilowatt jumps. I was then not sure where to break and how fast we could go. And the answer was earlier and not as fast. Should get away with quite sideways through Sebring without too much problem. And again, out the other side, there's a lot of acceleration. However, we then got another braking zone to head towards. We're again just going to go for the chuck the car in sideways and hope for the best in many ways. No! Oh, it was going so well. Uh, there was a little bit too much throwing the car around there, and that got the better of it. Well, this Covert is, I think, perhaps one of the most difficult cars I've had to drive down this course. It is unbelievably fast accelerating, but eerily with it, because, well, you don't hear any noise whatsoever. Uh, it also doesn't really behave itself under brakes. Uh, it doesn't turn in amazingly well, and then has 
unbelievable acceleration out the other side. So you're approaching corners with a lot of speed that you neither have the grip nor really the brakes to work with. Oh, and if it gets airborne, it kind of has some issues. Or if it gets airborne, oh god, we're bouncing. That was a minor airborne and we're bouncing around. Now, I don't know whether that's to do with the weight being in different places in this being an electric car, or whether that's to do with what looks like a rear suspension that doesn't take much damage before it starts collapsing. That rear does not look particularly healthy at the moment. To be fair, that might be caused by weight being, sort of stresses being put on the car in different ways that it wouldn't normally. Either way, it's not an easy vehicle, not an easy vehicle at all to uh, drive down here. Uh, we are making it there this time though with a little bit of caution. Uh, we've definitely got to be cautious around don't cut because I know what this car will do. Through the mud we go. Now it's acceleration up towards the line. It's 84 miles an hour across the line. That is an impressive amount of speed. Again, bear in mind, we are in a covert here. That's 84 miles an hour. And that was having to be very careful through Don't Cut. I don't think there's too many cars that can beat that. Sure, the Formula 1 car will and everything. But, uh, yeah, it's it's got unbelievable accelerations. But those handling issues, those handling issues make it very, very difficult to drive when it comes to a rally stage such as this one. Our third and final vehicle to take on the course is the RG Trophy. Yes, this a full-on trophy truck. Now, there are different specs of this. I am running the all-wheel drive Baja version. So, suspension, relatively soft, I guess, designed, hopefully designed to deal with big bumps and big jumps, which you do have some to work with on here. And all-wheel drive for the traction, the rear-wheel drive version of the truck is quite tough to go driving with. I'm going to give it as good a shot as I can here. This does stand a chance of going pretty quickly, let's face it. It is the sort of vehicle that is designed to deal with this kind of terrain. It might be a little bit more technical than perhaps the uh, the trophy would be expected to deal with. It is a big vehicle still. The brakes are good. The acceleration is on par, certainly, with the electric car. I've got that wrong on the way into Panorama. That's a new one. We've never rolled a vehicle there. Uh, <laughs> that is a new one. Uh, we might actually... Oh No, come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. We're fine. We're fine. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. One of the wheels nearly made it. Oh, the wheel's making it back up the river again. Uh, I love how the front left wheel has been punctured. I think the front left wheel might have been the one that's made it up the river and is now coming back down again. Catch the wheel! Oh no, it's still actually going. It's still spinning wildly like a lunatic. Uh, we might only have two wheels. Uh, however, we might actually be able to limp our way to the finish line here. Good things. I forgot to reset the caravan like a numpty. Uh, <laughs> Two-wheeled trophy truck makes it uh, through all of there. Uh, we're fine through the next hairpin. Now, what can we do? Oh, I might have, I've turned in too soon for sea ring. I was getting ready to... Oh, I'm an idiot. That is, that is completely stupid by me. Uh, damn it. I was getting ready. Whoa, hello. I don't quite know how to manage that one. I was getting ready to turn in for sea... To get the thing sliding into sea and I just pulled the handbrake and turned it in too soon. And then it all went a bit pear-shaped. Out of Hammond's hairpin and use all of that, uh, all of that acceleration, which there is plenty of. Uh, up over Panorama we go, a little bit wide. Oh, oh, that that's a new one. Uh <laughs> um, now we have had vehicles go out in many ways on this uh, on this course. I've never had one. <laughs> a wheel off quite so cleanly at Panorama. I'm perhaps not surprised, uh, uh, more surprised that other cars haven't done similar things, but there we go. Uh, we sh should be able to be, yeah, we can be pretty, pretty aggressive across the killer lot of jumps. But, <laughs> that's a normal line through there. That, everything was going smoothly, everything was going nicely, we turn into a corner, it's a bit bumpy on the inside, sure, normally we can get through, I guess this is kind of soft springy suspension, maybe high centre of mass is enough to see it go for a tumble. Well, the trophy truck has a little bit of a rolling habit, apparently, that's something that we're going to have to be mindful of, 
definitely something we're going to have to be mindful of. Now, I, I think I can probably be a bit later on the breaks into some of these corners. I'm perhaps being a little cowardly because I'm not expecting or I've, I've driven so many vehicles that are not very good under brakes and then suddenly to go into this that where you can be aggressive with it, where you can brake late with it is a little bit of a, a change of pace almost because uh, yeah you can get away with being pretty late uh, with this now don't pick up uh, <laughs> it drives like the super stadium trucks with the front wheel like wiggling around in the air when you uh, get it out of these corners it's not quite the front wheel wiggling around in the air I don't know if beam suspension can quite deal with all of that uh, we are the Sebring bumps no problem whatsoever for this truck even though it wasn't really like the ultimate well they the ideal sideways line through there they just did not affect the trophy. Now, don't cut to go. Shouldn't really matter if we do cut it in this. Quite frankly, it's got the suspension movement to deal with it. A run across the line. It's 70, about 78 miles an hour we hit the caravan at. It lost a wheel in hitting the caravan. Bear in mind, the uh, covert was going actually quicker. Out of that final corner of the run to the line, the covert was faster accelerating than the trophy truck. But... But the trophy truck brakes a lot better. It could actually, uh, has traction out of the hairpins, although fondness of rolling over is a little bit of a uh, concern, you might say. A little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a scare in places, but if you're careful with it, yeah, it's good fun. Good, good fun vehicle to, uh, to drive down that, uh, that stage. So, on to the results, and it is a fantastic time from the RG Trophy to go up into second place, a 107-0. Beating the Vortex beats the Covert V6-R4 as well. That's a hell of a time. Those brakes, the uh, suspension, the way it deals with the bumps is where that vehicle finds its time. The electric cover is also very impressive. Up into 10th, 110.7. That's all about the acceleration. Not very nice through the corners, but the acceleration that car has is unbelievable. It beats the RG Sandstorm, the racing buggy. We do have to go a little bit further down to find the uh, rallying Grand Marshal. Uh, perhaps not so much of a surprise down in 26th place, 117.6. While sure it has some form of off-road suspension, etc., it's still a big, and while lighter than some specs of the Grand Marshal, still a fairly big, fairly heavy, a little bit unwieldy car. Really, when you're dealing with a, a course this technical, this fiddly, yeah, the Grand Marshal is, I think, just a little bit too big, and it can't get traction, and it understeers a bit. Put all of that together likely to struggle a tad down this course that though is going to be it for this video as ever i shall link all the mods used in the description so you can download them have a go with them yourself but uh, thank you very much for watching and until next time uh goodbye